Well, any 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 time with you is appreciated. Um, oh man! Speaking of time, it's been a long time since you appeared at uh, uh, Harlem uh, Rio. Oh my <laughs> God! Yeah, remember that? Wow, Gabriel Cassius, and I might have so many stories for that. We could talk the whole seven minutes on that. With the mafia, but really? But it's brilliant in ways you'll never understand. Yes, ma'am. Haven't you heard that black white stuff went out of style with platform shoes and polyester jumps? Um, that, that, it was, that, it was that was that was that was that was a, a film that for some reason I'm familiar with this film from, from way back. You know, yeah, I want to know like yeah. how has your your dream of acting and and what what has like unfolded in your career changed from that moment till till now? Oh, man, young and dumb I was. <laughs> young and dumb. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I just got out of Juilliard. I just got out of drama school. I was very much like that little naive character I was playing in that film, Harlem Aria. And then the, the journey that that little character comes through and the, the opening his eyes and understanding, like, there's, there's more than just him in the world. Um, that was me. That's me. That that's what's happened in the last, you know, whatever. I don't know. I think maybe twenty years that 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 has been out. Um, and uh, I, I, as an artist, I haven't really sort of felt that I've come into my own until recently. It's taken me that long to sort of feel comfortable in the, you know, the way that I don't know the, the being an actor in this business and 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 the way that sometimes it can based on the color of your skin, the, the age you are, the, you get put in this pi pigeonhole, you know? And, 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 and when you get a little older, you start to break out, especially if you've got any kind of talent. I mean, hopefully I do. Um, and you start, to, you start to break out of that mold or probably what's happening is the industry, industry just doesn't care so much about you. So you're able to actually be free a bit um, and, uh, and, and take on roles. And really it's up to the filmmakers and the writers and, and the artists to really hire you because the studio is not so interested in you gaining all of the, you know, all, all, all of the likes. Um, and so, you know, it's been freeing actually to me, you know, I feel like I'm just sort of entering in to my own, you know, and, and I, unfortunately the projects you get are, are not always so, you know, interesting. And, and Harlem Aria, to be honest, you know, what Bill Jennings did with that story. I mean, it was so, um, for its time, large in scope and sort of crossing cultural boundaries. I mean, doing opera in a kind of urban setting. And I, I, I found it so beyond, you know, he was so ahead of his time. And I, I feel like, you know, Bill, I wish he was doing that movie now. You know, I think it would have a bit more of an impact um, or people, more appetite, you know, for people to see it. But, you know, with all good artists, they're always ahead of their time, you know, and it always, it always takes a while for people to catch up. So it's been great and coming in to see has been really fun. Um, you know, being able to have a character part, I guess that's what it is, you know, going from sort of the leading young man stuff, which I was never happy about. I never, I was never that good at either. Um, you know, it just seemed pretty boring to me. So I went into playing psychotic characters after that, just sort of, you know, playing the bad guys and, and having more fun with that, you know? And now actually it, it, there's a period of time where I can come back in and, and use all the bad guy stuff muscles that I was what is was developing over the years but then sort of put some more emotionality and, 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 and intelligence behind it you know which I think also people get lost you know they get lost in sort of having like an idea of a bad guy you know and that humans are complicated you know humans are complicated and then just seeing the business change has been great it's been it's been you know when I was doing Harlem Aria I remember going out to dinner with with uh, Damon Wayans and, and Gabriel Cassius, and we went to some really amazing barbecue place up in the Upper West Side. And we leave that restaurant, and you know, Damon was like, "Okay, Christian, get a, get a, get his cab." You know, like I was like, "You're Damon Wayans. Like, what are you talking about?" <laughs> you know, and it was purely color of skin. You know, to to go grab a, a taxi cab, and that's the culture. I have a wish I could say it never happens anymore, but it happens a lot less. I'll put it yeah. that way. You know, it happens less. And to see anything that's less and, and, and changing, and then to go into a show like C, where it's predominantly, yes, you know, we have, 
you know, the same sort of hierarchy exists within the studio system these days, and we can't take a blind eye to that. Um, I think there needs to be some attention on that as well, um, with all of the BIPOC stuff that's going on right now. But generally speaking, you look at the show as far as the representation is concerned and the cast and everything else, and it's it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different ball game, really. You know, my my personal side is, you know, I I wish the same was going on for Native Americans and, and Hispanics and Latinos, uh, which I don't feel is really happening in the business, but it, it'll get there, hopefully. You know, hopefully the, there'll still be a trend that just keeps going, you know. Um, and it's been weird being, you know, the, the grandson of a, of, a, of a Latino actor who, who spent his whole time hiding behind radio because of the color of his skin and then being out there as sort of, a, you know, people think I'm, I'm just a white boy and then having all of that, you know, anti backlash and just seeing you know my grandfather would be like what is going on in the world you know yeah. just saw this oh correction over overcorrection over overcorrection so it's been it's been really it's been wild to to witness and i just feel so damn lucky for working through it you know and 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 also getting a chance to be in i think you know some groundbreaking new stories you know that 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 portray not just the the, the people without sight and sight challenge and whatever, but also what that does is mean that it's not really about the color of your skin because we can't see it, you know? And to see that the socioeconomic parts of it really are what's at play here, you know? That in our in our show, we're seeing, you know, it's the rich and the poor. And then, and I can't remember who, what speaker I was uh, uh, listening to, but about, you know, race relationships and really at the core of it, it's the rich and poor. You know, and we we hide behind these labels, you know, of 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 color of skin. So in this piece, in, in C, we get to some, in in very commercial way, we get to some sort of root causes, you know, that are interesting to sort of develop, and and I think are going to be developing more as we go. My witch finders will do as I say, as they have done my entire ring. They're my army. No. They are my army. Mark Dijon? I'm glad you haven't forgotten me. You're alive! Thank the God Flame! You have no idea what I went through. If you're gonna trade in lies, make sure the truth is buried with the dead. Lies? It was you who destroyed Kanzua. He is lying! Arrest this man! I said arrest this man! They don't serve you anymore. Speaking of uh, Blind Eye, I mean, I know we got we got you, the great Jason Momoa, and Dave Bautista, and a lot of great actors and actresses uh, in this film, but there, there's, a, there's also a, a portion of the cast and crew that are uh, either blind or low vision actors, um, how does it feel to have for those actors to get to be part of something that's such a huge production, such a huge um, uh, uh, banner for, for Apple TV? Well, every, every, every episode or every time I go into the makeup chair or I see one of these actors that's come in with low vision or blind and um, most of them have had to sort of um, find other ways of income and other ways of things because getting work has been so difficult. And the gift that this show has provided for these actors, not just for themselves as actors, but also for, for everything they stand for as far as their, their vision is concerned. Um, it's like, I mean, they're always beaming with joy and you can't, you just can't be grumpy. <laughs> you can't, you know, you can't be grumpy around people that are, have so much gratitude for being seen and quote unquote seen, meaning, you know, in all of its words, you know, being hired, being appreciated, being, being the focal point, you know, without all these puns, but it's, you know what I mean? And, and it's really just joyous to be part of and to experience and, and very humble making, you know, um, and also very illuminating. I find it like super educational, like Joe Strecce, our, our blind consultant who had vision at one time when he was very young, but, but lost it. And you know, now I ask him, you know, like, did you have, would you, would you want it back if you could? And he's like, absolutely not. You know, what it's been able to do for him as far as his own interior space and, you know, with, 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 he doesn't need it. 
And it's like, you know, it's just amazing to see that we think, oh, you know, these are, you know, these people are disadvantaged or they're, they're less than, and it's so not true, you know, and that's what this show, show I think is showing me. Yeah. And, and I, I got a, I got a wrap, but I, I have to ask you, I mean, you're, you're also a witch hunter and this, uh, do, do you got like a real problem with witches? Like what's the, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I think witches just like Satan is like another sort of to, to, to throw the plurality of our, you know, socioeconomic world on its ass and just go, you know what, there's, there's, we, there's other, there's, there's always an interest in the other, you know, and, and, and a kind of fascination with the other. And let's examine that, you know, and if I could play that through being a witch hunter or a witch finder or whatever it is, fine, you know, give me those roles. They're fun. <laughs> well, Christian, great talking to you, man. Thanks, I think Julian. I might need to get a Harlow Aria too. Um, oh man, we should do a reunion. <laughs> we should do a reunion screening. Call Bill up. Let's do it. I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm telling everybody to love seeing uh seeing in the season finale and everything else that's coming with yeah. it. Great show. Yeah. Can't wait to see the next seasons coming and uh yeah. and everything Thanks, else. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, man. It's good talking with you. Good talking to you too. Thank All you. All right, take care, man. Bye.